Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Nicole. I was the creator of COVID and Cigarettes. I so took a role in it. And I was uh, one of the actors um, playing a fictional version of myself, I suppose, in a way, in a short uh, dialogue written by Ryan King. I really wanted to do something with David because I think well, we did work together in uh, Waitress on Top, which is like a student's project, it's a kid's project. And uh, we did this together last year, <laughs> and that was, that was fun, but I kind of wanted to have like a, a role in a mm. drama with him, because since the last day of Judas Iscariot, we well, actually Well, I was going to say, I'd like to remind you that we got together during a play that we were both in. Well, you don't have to remind me, I don't have Alzheimer's, seven, by the way. Seven so, years, seven years. So I know, know that, I, know, I, know. I just said that ever <laughs> since we haven't done anything together. Um, well, uh, not at that, not in the same... You directed me in one play as well. Yeah, yeah, but not in the same capacity, not like the two of us directed by somebody else acting in the same play. Yeah. That didn't happen yeah. since Judas. That's what Absolutely. I was Absolutely, that was in 2013. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. So I, back then we didn't really know each other. No, exactly. So I wanted to do something with uh, with David, yeah, and Ryan made it happen. Yeah, and I wanted to do it um, to be in something with you. I, I I was actually quite attracted to it because it was an original piece written by a friend of ours. Oh. It's also quite short, so easy to do. It also could be like done in our house, which takes a hat about a lot, lot of things. And I'm also moving quite soon to the Middle East, away from Nicole, so it's nice to do something together before we go. Oh, it's great. It's great. It was funny because I recognised some elements of our own relationship in it, I suppose, a little bit. Um, but I think that's just common to most relationships in a way, you know, the elements that I recognised. Um, but it's always a delight, a delight to work with Nicole. I mean, it's a fairly short play mm. set in a fictional uh, future. I think one thing I kind of realised was that I, I'm not an actor, as an actor, I'm certainly not an actor, but when I do act, I find it actually harder to act in dialogues where there's not um, extreme emotions in it. I think I'm better when I'm playing a very angry person or a very upset person or anything like that. Just having a normal conversation, I've, and because of my lack of experience in acting, mm. having a normal experience in acting is actually really difficult. Yes, it is. You know, to make that look real and, um, and, and purposeful, I found, I, 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 I find it quite difficult to do. And this kind of screens apart, this kind of dialogue between us really emphasise that for me. For sort of when a character is like really emotional and angry and upset and you know maybe some long dialogue. Cool. It was great because like it was our little project together. Mm. So um, of course like I like to be very diligent when I play a part. So I would get off book as soon as I can. I would get familiar with my lines. I don't want to stumble. I don't want to struggle. So I I think I took more time than him to learn my lines, but um, I don't think he put so much discipline into it. But they're like, that's just the way I am. Uh, it was it was great to to work with him because like, it's uh, it was our little like our little thing together. Finally, it was happening that we were doing something together. I really enjoyed working with Ryan and uh, with Lou. Um, Ryan actually was not too involved. He respected Lou's vision and. Uh, he said he was fine with whatever vision was taken. And of course, Lou had a very, like for the Zoom, uh, we imagined to be like in front of screens and that was it. But Lou made it really, really dynamic. And it was interesting to see how somebody else directs you mm. in, a, in a Zoom play at your home. Because like, actually there are so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, so many angles you can use, so mm -hmm. you don't have to be in front of a computer and do everything. You can just experiment, and that's what we did. And I remember the night, uh, sorry, the day of the recording, <laughs> I was really concerned about the light because we needed to use natural light. We're mm -hmm. not really well equipped at the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like my camera on the computer was absolutely blurred. It was like not cooperating at all. So I'm like, okay, we need to record this because we were already quite late compared to the others. 
And it's not like, yeah, we, we, we need to do this today. It's also a beautiful day, so we should use the natural light. You know what, we can't use my computer, we need to use the iPad. Mm. So we need basically, what we did, we, was, uh, we were using the iPad, we were using my iPhone, and that was it. So a visual, it looks okay. It looks fine. So you don't need to have anything too fancy to do your own projects at your own place. So I really hope that this project will inspire others mm -hmm. to do more, to get out of, the comf of their comfort zone and say like, if they did it, I can do it. And we want to inspire people. That's, that's what, that's what is, it, it is about at, at Aurora Theatre. It it's always been about give people something to think about, entertain and inspire. That's good. That's really nice to hear. I mean, we have to remember one thing, that this is fiction. Yeah. It's not real. <laughs> so we, we, we really embraced the two characters, but we're, we are also different from the characters. We laugh, we argue, we get on each other's nerves, we annoy each other, we still love each other. So we, we basically can relate to Greg and Samantha, but we're, we're different people. Mm -hmm. uh, Samantha, for example, gets upset at things that I would never get, get upset about. Such as? The toilet seat. Oh. Arca. Porn. <laughs> Whatever, do what you want. As long as you, as long as it's on video, as long as you don't actually like go and find another lady, fine with that. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> All right, okay. Take it off now. What? What? Take it off. What? <laughs> All right, what did she say about me? <laughs> How did you meet her? Like, what was your first impression of her? So I met her at a uh, going away party for a mutual friend. At the time, nothing happened. In, indeed, she was actually still married at that time. But um, we met again about a year later mm -hmm. in a bar. She was looking incredible, of course. Oh. Back then, she had like this dyed blonde, incredible like, dyed blonde hair all the way down. It's amazing. She still looks great, but it's less blonde now. She told me that she's in the middle of casting for a play that she was acting in and producing for her company, Aurora Theatre. She was looking for somebody who was quite big. And she was like, oh, have you done the acting? I was like, well, I did a little bit, you know, like everybody at school. And I did like one or two productions at university as well, just like small, medium parts there, quite enjoyed it, but I haven't done, any, haven't done anything for 12 years or something. She's like, oh, why don't you just come along to an audition and we'll see how it goes. So I went along and I, I read for the last days of Judas Iscariot playing the character of Pontius Pilate. She gave me the role, you know, and um, we began rehearsals a few months later and that's how we got again. And because of the role that she gave you the opportunity of, is when you guys started having a relationship? Yeah, yeah. And since then, I've done a few more productions, little things here and there, you know, when I can find time. I, I have a, a full-time job in, a, in a, another industry. Well, it must be uh, hard to like, handle two things. Well, yeah, but, you know, I've also had bouts of unemployment as well, <laughs> which have made things a little easier. Um. Uh, and at the moment, I'm working quite unusual hours. I work from like 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., which meant mm. we could film the screens apart and rehearse in the mornings and things like that. So, I mean, have you found anything new about uh, Nicole after you guys got married? Well, you always find out new things, I suppose. Uh, we had only been together for a year and a half or so. By the time I asked her to marry me, it took another year to get married. Yeah, I mean, what have I found out about her? She, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I've ever found out about her. She's a great cook. She loves baking. A bit untidy sometimes. <laughs> like, we have different, like, she's obsessed by cleaning the floor, but she's not obsessed by, like, but, but she can leave the washing up for, like, three days. You know, two, three days. Well, we have a helper who comes uh, every okay. now and again, so that helps. But uh, she likes, and I, I'm quite tidy. Mm. Like I, she, she'll put her clothes around the place and I'll pick up and do that. But then she will like need to have like a clean floor and clean surfaces and a nicely laid out bed and things like that. So different ways of being tidy, I suppose, which kind of complements each other in a way. That kind of I does. Suppose. Um, I don't know what else I found about, uh, about her. I guess I found out that I really love Italian culture. <laughs> we go on holiday to Italy almost every year. 
uh, hang out with her family who are great, I get on really well with them, really love them. Um, and I've also found out that I have a, also a, an obsession with cats now. Aww. I never really had cats too much when I was growing up. I mostly had dogs. Now I love cats. Now I'm going to ask you another question. Um, would you say that Nicole had opened you up in terms of the theatre world? Yes, of course, yeah, absolutely. So I went through a little bit when I was younger, a little bit at university, and then I didn't do anything. And now she's got me much more into it, so if I have time, I'll do it. Uh, usually I'd like to collaborate with her, um, but I did do something a few months <coughs> ago, which was you know, the Corona Monologues, which was an online Zoom event, for uh, which was writ uh, a bunch of monologues, about 10 of them, written by local writers in Hong Kong, uh, obviously about the theme of coronavirus. And it was all filmed on Zoom with a live audience, and it was all for charity. We made about twenty-five thousand dollars for charity. That's great. So most of the things I, I do is for Nicole, unless something else comes up, which I think would be suitable for my availability. You know. Oh you wait till you see the video. <laughs> now I want to ask, um, how did you meet David? Uh, what was your first impression of him? We met during the, uh, actually, the first time that I met David was a year before Judas. We met at a mutual friend's party. It was her farewell party. And we met there, and I thought it was very nice talking to him. And I did say, we talked about theatre. I told him that I, uh, I had a theatre company called Aurora. And, uh, and he told me that he did theatre, a lot of theatre, back in the days at, at university. And I did tell him that maybe sometimes he should come and try. He should come and audition or read for something or get in touch. And that was it. I have seen him until a year later. And when we saw each other again, I said, by the way, um, do you remember what we talked about last time? We talked about theater. And I remember you saying that uh, you did a lot of theater back in the days in, in, at university. And I said to him, I'm doing this play, which is like an amazing play, great script fantastic story. It's called The Last Days of Judas Iscariot. And the probably 90, 95% of the cast is male and I'm struggling to find people and I would really like to find new people. So if you're thinking about auditioning, that would be a great time. So, you know, just give it a go and he's like, oh, should I, I just want to try for a small role. I don't want to have anything too demanding. I haven't done it in a while. And I said, you know what, just, just try it. Just give it a go. And he came for the audition. I was producing it at that time and playing and playing the lead role. And the, me and the director saw David. And they were like, whoa, <laughs> he's good. And I think I was more impressed. I mean, me and the director didn't really talk very much. I just wanted to go home and digest over, over the, the auditions. We had a lot of people turning up in the end. I said to him, look, I think I'm gonna cast David in the part of Pontius Pilate because I think it's the best so far and uh, I don't want him to you know lose the momentum I don't want him to go like oh yeah but I found other projects to get involved with or other things I'm like I want him to do this yeah in the scene that we had we were basically arguing all the time like well arguing it was like um, a portion of drama so I was basically the, def the uh, defense lawyer and he was a witness and I basically attacked him. And uh, Pontius Pilate is a very angry man. So he didn't <laughs> like to have some girl attacking him. <laughs> so yeah, that's how, that's how we all started. I love that play, absolutely adore that play. That was the time where I felt that Aurora Theatre really stepped up mm -hmm. with a super, uh, with a very, uh, superb piece of theatre and a great cast, great director. Felt so good at that time. We did a really fantastic project. It's probably the, the one, one of the two that I'm the most proud of among one, my work. It's that one and Inherit the Wind. Two courtroom dramas. I like those. That's, uh, that's how it, it all started. Oh, and do you, would you say that that's how your relationship start from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I was gonna say, that's why Judas holds a special place in my heart, not only because it's a great, uh, great play and one of the best work I've ever done, but also because I got together with David. I mean, not during the play afterwards, but mm -hmm. that's how we met him. That's good. 
And after you guys get married, um, I want to ask, like, have you found anything new about him, like any discoveries while living with him and everything? The recycling, the way he washes dishes. Why? What's the way he washes dishes? The way that I have to redo it afterwards. <laughs> that in that way. Yeah. Okay. So. But you guys, but you still love him, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> but <laughs> that's so good. But yeah, that's what happens. The dishes, the recycling, the floor. <laughs> Something's going on. <laughs> yeah, mind your own. Listen to your own music. But yeah, um, uh, in terms of like, <laughs> would you say that you were able to open up the theater world to him? Because like he stopped for 12 years. I think it was the the the, the catalyst. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was because David actually has been busy this year. He was involved in other acting projects uh, without Aurora. So he's been acting on a few things on his own. And I'm glad that I was the one to reintroduce him mm -hmm. to, to the theater. David has an amazing thing. He, like, uh, something that actors would be very, like, especially beginners, would be very envious of him. You give him a piece, and he gets it. He just gets it. And not too many people can do that. Mm. He has this special ability to, you know, do the piece justice. And that's amazing. And so, so many times I said, are you sure you don't want to pursue this? Are you sure? Because you are good. Um, but no, it's just a hobby for him. Maybe a bit more than a hobby, but he still. Well, he still looks for opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still enjoys. He still enjoys having his banking jobs and <laughs> finance jobs. I think that's what he wants. So I respect that. But when I can, I try to involve him because I really like to to do things together. Okay. And plus, he's very. He's, he understands what I do. He's very supportive. So oh. that was the most in, important thing for me. Uh, everything else, <laughs> but uh, it's important that someone understands me and understands what I do because, especially like being an artist in Hong Kong, is not for everyone. It's not like uh, what you would hear. Mm -hmm. You, especially for expats, you come to Hong Kong to have a corporate job or to do uh, or to have a full time job, make decent money, and then go back home. Um, I basically put together a. a a company um, because I wanted to see some arts happening so and consistently and I wanted to rely on myself that's why I did that. Why should people watch Screens Apart? That's just because it's really good, it's entertaining, it's slightly dystopian but in a humorous way of course and it, it's also close to home because it's about relationships and how they would deal with these kind of situations. It's a fictional, fictional dystopian future. Mm and how that would affect a normal couple. Mm. I think like, it's okay, you know, COVID is a very tragic event and there is no doubt about that, but it's okay to find the irony in... Uh, the humor. The humor, of course. In, uh, in bad things. Yeah, you know. it's, just, it's just very well written. Exactly. It's tight, yes. quite short. Yes. So it doesn't take up too much of people's time. Yes. So it's always good in this hurried world, but we're hoping to make a series as well. I, dem shorter, I demanded, I demanded, I demanded a spin-off. <laughs> I demand. I think this is how people would live with it if we were, if we were in sort of semi-permanent. I lockdown. think, I think a this lot of people what, this is what can relate to it. A lot of people can relate to it. Especially yeah. like those who, imagine those couples who just moved in just before COVID. Mm. You know, they moved in together, they thought like, yeah, we're gonna to be together, but of course they thought about having their own space and their own time and everything, and then in the end they were forced, pushed to be together. Yeah. And they're not in extraordinary circumstances domestically. Mm. They're just they're just in an extraordinary circumstance externally. Yeah, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but not they're, very, they're very normal people, they're very normal couples. Yeah. Um, and that's interesting in itself because yeah. you know, this is how most people would react. It's very funny. <laughs> and it's very funny. And I would say, amazingly active. Yeah. <laughs> Just brilliant. Oscar worthy. Yeah. Tony award winning. Anyway, thank you for the interview. Do you have any final words to say before we wrap it up? Watch ours.
Yes. Over all the others. But also watch the others. Watch ours first. <laughs> because they are awesome. Yeah. They're but awesome. ours is the most awesomest. <laughs>